Hello, hello everybody, welcome back to the LGL Officially Unofficial Podcast Season 2, Episode 33, Alex Swan, otherwise known as Mars Swan, joined as always by the man in the middle square, so we're gonna have to get you on a show of Jeopardy or something along those lines, Initialize, welcome sir. I'm very happy to be here, thank you for the welcomes. I, I, what's the show I'm trying to think of here where they pick the squares out of the numbers? I know the one, like, as kids, it was like 50-50, but that's not what I'm thinking of right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say I'm not going to be much help with you because I'm struggling to picture exactly what you're telling me. I've got, it's I've like, got um, squares like and numbers. It's like all squares. Like it, was, it was an American game show. I don't think it know, really it's took not like, off in the UK. Yeah, I th it's like it's Blockbuster like or something like that. Or... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Something oh, along okay. the okay. I'm going to say, oh, I think I don't yeah. Yeah, 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 and you have a bunch of like random people, and they yes, all have to I work exactly together. Say, I, I only know about I like the chase and things which try yeah. to be the chase nowadays. That's kind of my knowledge of game shows. I also vaguely remember things I, like the, the other one is like you know like, the, those Japanese ridiculous game shows, like where like a certain object in a room is actually made of chocolate. So you have to go oh, around yeah. fighting objects until you find what's made of chocolate. It's like someone's shoe or a door handle, um, or the table is actually made out or, of or like reckless clear... GT contact contracts. The man that you just I'm heard dead. say that one that's line up, that was done. Nymera! Welcome, Nymera, to <laughs> the podcast! How's it going? Uh, yeah, I, I feel very welcomed. Um, get of course, been I was just over on Summoning Insight yesterday, so we... Uh, oh, yeah, no, I, nice I'm, name drop there. I'm, I'm super clued up on all this LGL stuff. Not mm. like, Every time one of these things happens, I'm like, okay, time to put anxiety into overdrive and watch clips for, like... 15 hours straight and get ready for it. So today, I'm the most prepared I have ever been for anything. Let's go. <laughs> All right, time um, to throw a bunch of What's the average in-flight speed of a North African swallow? Depends if it's heavily laden or not, Sam. It's heavily laden. Oh, it's about 30 meters a second. No, oh, good to yeah. know. Why do you know swan facts and I don't? Because <laughs> I looked it up and I did <laughs> physics as a degree. <laughs> Why are you measuring? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is a League of Legends and Japanese podcast. But before we always get into it and we uh, apparently talk game shows, I really don't yeah. watch games. I don't watch anything outside of there was just a huge Twitch game show that Ludwig had put on. Oh, if yeah. anyone watched that, it was oh, pretty yeah. fun to go watch, but that's kind of game showy related. Anyway. Nymera, yeah. outside of being on Summoning Insights, what have you been up to? How you doing, buddy? Uh, I've been doing a great amount in my life. I've been kind of taking a bit of a break week-ish. Sam and I went to go see our grandparents the other day, which was lovely, because of course lockdown, yeah, I really haven't nice. seen them for a very long time. We hadn't seen them for like two years. So that was really cool. Damn. So I had some family time. Uh, Been sleeping a lot to try and catch up on that. I watched a full playthrough of Yakuza 0, which was fucking incredible. It was so good. That's been a lot of my time. How many hours up. was that? 90. 90 hours. It's really good, though. Worth every second of it. So, yeah, I've been largely just recovering. That's largely what I've been doing. Um, but I've been keeping an eye on various league stuff, trying to play some games there. I've been, been streaming, too. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I hit my second emote goal the other day, which is really cool, because I'm getting some new emotes commissioned for my channel. So I've been focusing on me whilst keeping an eye on the wider play-ins world, and I've been enjoying it, actually. It's been good to kind of be away from the uh, the heat for a little bit, just to got some time to cool down. Good, good. What about you? Glad what have you been up to, been... Lexi? Glad to you've been taking some care of yourself and kind of rehealing mm. and kind of taking some time to uh, to kind of gain perspective on everything because you've been just so ham to the the ground so much recently, bit. Alex. It's I I can realize. Uh, yeah, but yeah. burnout is real, by the way, guys. Burnout is yeah, I like I know time. everyone gets watch it. Watch that interview. But like, yeah, but like, but oh yeah, is that the Ashley Kang Mac one? Yeah, the burnout, Kang burnout is super interview. real. Like, brilliant I, interview. I. Parts of the time, like, to get, like, a little real about it, parts of the time this year, I was burning out, like, every other week. Oh, yeah. Like, mm. every other week, I was, like, reaching, like, that break point again. I'm like, okay, this is probably not sustainable. So it's been really good to have a break for a bit. No. And, and I'm glad that yeah. you've been able to yeah. have that break. Um, mm. For me, uh, what have I been up to? So you... Tell us. Um, so it was my grandma's 80th, so oh, I wow. went along to that. Um, ended up seeing a bunch of family and stuff, obviously within COVID um, mm. and everything else. Haven't sit, been able to see many or any, really, of my family for like the last year and a half, two years. Mm. 
I'm not someone that really misses people like my family directly. So uh, you're independent. Hasn't been strong independent it has, broadcaster. I'm far more of like a friend person. I miss right. my friends far more than I miss my family, and that's just mm. how I've always been. Um, so if you become my friend, expect me to miss you far more than my mother. So uh, <laughs> just small expectations there on i'm gotcha. just memeing a little bit <laughs> only a little bit uh, <laughs> not making it better lexi <laughs> no I, I don't i don't try to make it better it's like like my mother's going to listen or watch to this because she doesn't uh she has no idea what i do most of the time anyway see independence we're, we're an independent family um outside of that uh been playing some video games oh, yeah. um i recently playing? got to um, so I actually just basically had a complete game day with a nice. friend of mine from that currently lives in Korea because um, ah. I haven't been able to talk to him for yonks. So we ended up playing some Mario Party over the internet. Um, we played this kind of like Smash Brothers, but if it was a roguelike Steam game, I can't quite remember what kind it was of off the top of my... Like a cool concept. Is it? Um, it was, it's like all 8-bit style. Um, oh, cool. I... Let me see. Does he? Did the he... only rogue like I can remember in eight bit style is like I mean, there's Curse of the Nocturne Dancer and then there's Wizard of Legend, which is kind of like what Hades did actually. Wizard of Legend was quite similar to Hades. Mm. Oh, so I I, I, I played that. Genius. Mm. So uh, yeah, outside of that, I've just been reading and looking up a lot of D and D stuff recently. Cool. Um, and just yeah, enjoying D and D and vampire stuff. Haven't actually done any of it. I've just been in consuming and reading and waiting. I, I think I've drafted like four so, or five different characters. But for those of you who don't know my relationship to D and D, my entire tabletop life is trying to make rangers good because sadly in five e and not that satisfying. And I I take umbrage against that. But there's been XP a, to like, level with three did a really good video on rangers and how. Yeah, but like yeah. with the D with the D and D anniversary thing, they've um, mm. they've released like a whole new subclass, and one of the Ranger ones, dare I say it, actually good. So I might have to delve into that again and oh make the, the the Drake Warden I, look I okay just again. Make charisma characters, one way or another. It's either wizards with decent charisma. Oh well, you know they always you like say that you yeah you can play like stuff that you are in real life in D and D. Yeah, which is and sometimes you just play what you are, but you know worse because you know I had to like tone myself down for the game. It's unfair for everyone else. And my natural charm and charisma is a bit bit intense for for a board game, you know. So you know you just got to turn it down. Uh huh. Anyway, how are you doing? <laughs> Love you, buddy. Doing great. Um, just just wafting away the slight sense of bullshit and moving on from that. It's 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 doing all right. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a weird couple of weeks. Obviously, off season's kind of just hit. Um, sort of taken some time off, but part of it was just spinning my wheels a little bit. So finally, mm. uh, re-engaging a little bit more now. I've got a couple of articles uh, around about that I've been been getting been mulling around on and. Uh, oh, read if you're his post. Yeah. If we don't yeah, plug it, look at one. Pod, yep, it's, it's, it's came it's come it's out in between, on, right? Yeah, it's over on Jinx TV. It's basically my my take on a effectively with with the sort of um, riot fiesta drama stuff where effectively which is a talking were, point for us, which is a talking well, I, point. Yeah, we we might leave it for a little bit then because I can bring up my points then if, if if we're gonna bring it up later in a bit more detail potentially. Um, but but basically, I put my thoughts out there. Um, the TLDR is the apology was important and makes a lot of sense and shows there wasn't necessarily malice involved. But, you know, if Riot are frustrated and rightly so, then fans should be too. And I think planes in general are underrepresented, under produced, I think, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't think the show is given the, the weight it should be. Uh, and that's a bit of a tragedy. Again, I come yeah. from a biased perspective as to all three of us because we love the LJL and a number of other minor regions and a lot of our fellow casters in the same sort of space love their regions too. And uh, like, the, no, I, there it is, is a bit of a travesty to see the uh, the show a little bit diminished. And there is actually a very reasonable take to say that Planes is not actually that valuable. Actually, there are some reasonable takes depending on the lens that you sure. do things through. Obviously, yeah, I'm yeah. not of that opinion, but particularly... Uh, when you take into context that Rift Rivals failed quite poorly, there isn't a great amount of international competition which gives meaningful experience to minor region teams. And even then, it's one team from that region, which means you've got this perpetual, like, stuck-in-the-pit mentality where only one team occasionally makes it out of that kind of blip and then kind of fades back into obscurity and the region doesn't really progress. 
I think this play-ins and also what we've got from from MSI is a pretty good format to actually give that those teams mm. better experience. You're likely to get a best of five in play-ins, uh, play-ins of worlds. You play against first seeds in groups from from MSI. That's relevant experience once, but it's still you could you could take the angle that it's more of a token effort rather than actually good representation uh, for minor regions and in international events. But, and this has yeah. been something we've talked about several times, the fact yeah. that there should be a huge... A huge we would love to see a huge push. Um, I remember when after MSI, we, we mm. wanted to see a push in some capacity. Obviously, we're aware of COVID and everything else and restrictions, mm. but we want to see more international competitions, especially around minor regions. There should definitely be at least one or two more slots just open to any of the minor region teams in yep. a minor region free for all. I still want that because it would be I, so cool to have do, a minor do regional, region. Do regional qualifiers outside of your regions for worlds? Maybe you have like yeah. VCS. I would love. Maybe you have like VCS uh, yeah. uh, three, 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 five, Give me PCS LGL, six LGL they, teams in there. Yeah. You know, and, like and, that kind of thing. Yeah. Make it a massive little thing, like play off like that. We have have like four open slots to worlds. Have like a, yeah. basically that like, they're like open entry. And people just go and have a go. So you could actually have like Carmine Corp maybe try and make their way through. Yeah, have it. Like, that kind of thing. Have have like I absolutely yeah. think with the with with and the, some of the, the and so, like C9 the, Academy yeah. as well and Hundred T like they deserve it. Hundred T especially. I mean, they'd still potentially have to have like Qualify the restrictions like, as they stand in there. You can like just yeah. only have like a you know like a in terms of like because of where the region they are which you know completely I think oh i think if you have four seats you just don't get allowed to qualify for this right and that, that's a very I mean, easy like, way of doing something yeah, like that like, just or, or, to kind I don't, of i don't even care having fifth or sixth lpl going through this i think that would be made for because then basically you just have like a basic thing like, a massive it, right? free for all yeah. and you say okay mm. whoever makes it in makes it in um and, and i think it, potentially that you, you could that, have some really though, exciting people come through that way if you do that it does obviously have to affect how groups are drawn because that means you're going to have potentially five or six lpl teams in groups and that However, I, I think that the way that Riot has done its seeding and school system stuff like that is not it's it's trying to enforce certain matchups in the competition, certain like it, certain boundaries on it which aren't necessarily conducive with the proper level of co competition. Like the for instance, the problem is you are always going to you always wanted to have the NA first seed in your groups. You always wanted that because that meant you were dodging a first seed. And that actually means that the first that like coming out first from your group oh, just was, much, first seed. was was pretty much right like dodge, was, dodge, yeah. dodge one of the tournament favorites because na first seed has rarely been held to like a semi-final standard sometimes that happens would you say there's ever been a period of time outside of the first four worlds where na wasn't was at least maybe started to be considered like F19. i don't think from season five onwards season Some, season two MSI. There were a couple of MSIs. I think actually season CLG seven finals, TSM, as much as they didn't get out of group. Season season seven at the TSM coming in first. CLG wasn't pegged bad. for that prior to the event, obviously. Yeah, but like I mean, like season yeah, seven season. TSM coming in as first but were not I bad. Think they, they were not. Didn't poor. they take down G Tigers at one of the IEMs as well? Wanted to won an international. Yeah, yeah, IEM. That, that would have been season season season, season five IEM. Um, yeah, they they did that, and I believe that's Isn't because I, I think that's because a couple of teams chose not to participate. That was definitely something. You found um, the crux where I'm like, after season four, and you're like, season five. It's like, God damn. Yeah. So like, there have been points where like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, like results speak for themselves. Right? Re results yeah. speak for themselves. But yeah, there have been points where that happened, like standard NA. 2018 C9, you know? Yeah. yeah with mm. most, like, I think the thing is, it's been consistency. And there's like, the first seeds from NA, at least in Worlds, have nearly guaranteed disappointed, which is always... Mm always frustrating and it's kind of been cloud nine and whoever Second else has gone along seed, kind yeah. of choking and especially when it is such big names when it is like particularly tsm where it was you know the bjergsen on double left arrow where you had like v2 na superstars with you know sven skeren whoever in the jungle this kind of firebrand who's coming as another superstar and you know this kind of Monster stuff going on was seriously good too actually like his nautilus yeah, he... was very good right and like and the, the, there is that element that was like Part of the reason NA has got such an unfortunate reputation really is um, very mercurial MSI performances, sometimes when mm -hmm. they're really good and sometimes when they're really not. And then world performances where your first and second seeds historically have been very underwhelming. And then it's kind of been down to one team, normally C9, looking okay and making a decent yeah. run of it. But never, ever have they really been tournament favorites, especially but after let's, poor let's performances just, from first season. Let's just come back away. Yeah. We're not an NA podcast, well, lads. Say, we are an LJL one. Taking like the step back, what it all kind of comes into is like the, the, assume, the enforced balance between regions doesn't 
really work out to be the most competitive format. That's quite obvious to say. There are some good things which come off that. Of course, it's better for some fan bases and viewership yeah. in some cases and whatever. Which I understand. But reason. like, it, it <clears throat> definitely adds in some very difficult situations when you are a minor region because there is like no other way to get international competition. You get like one token. What we got one seed, the golden ticket to go to Worlds, and it doesn't really actually sure. net you that much. We so only get larger... two tickets a, a whole year to oh, play yeah. some international yeah. town. And, and yeah. luckily, in the last last season or two, we've actually had formats which can support that international competition a little better. But anyway, it's just like a bit of an extended point on yeah, play-ins are not necessarily the highest value they could be, no. mainly because the overall ecosystem of League of Legends right now for international competition mm -hmm. is it, it does have limitations, has but serious let's... limitations. Yeah. But let's like go away from there. Yep. We're waiting for one day when Riotcon becomes a thing and we can truly get the Dangerous. battle of titans. I, I don't know how they're going to fix it in their global calendar, but eh, that's not my logistics problem to figure out at this moment in time. <laughs> Riot, though, I'm available for work if you want me to figure it out. I'm pretty good at logistics. Um, Gentlemen, though, yes, this is an LGL podcast and we it are is. the LGL officially unofficial. Mm. Detonation Focus Me is our team, our mm -hmm. lifeblood, and the ones we are channeling with all of our hopes and prayers. If there was a spirit bomb, it would be all going into DFM's uh, back pocket, I guess? Front pocket? I don't that know. seems a bit rude, like, you know, you just, like, hit our team with a bat with a giant bomb. Like, well, we're giving rude. them the power. Oh, I see, Have just you... handing it over. Like, we're just, just handing yeah, the yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Maybe it's like a grenade jump in Halo, you gotta yeah, do that to they, they, the jump. They, they, they've, nerfed that. they've nerfed that a bit, actually, they need to up That's really annoying. Yeah, you have to do it in the custom games, isn't it? It's one of my favourite things in, in Halo. I'm Sorry on the tangent, bring it back to League of Legends, wrong game. Um, <laughs> um, we are going to be focusing heavily on this episode around Group B, yes. which is Detonation Focus Me's main group. Before coming into this episode, I requested that each of us would mm -hmm. review, at least VOD review the minimum, the finals. If they could, If we could do more, fantastic. Mm. If you couldn't... Don't blame you. I didn't. I didn't go much further on UOL or GS, I'll be honest. I, I did a bit more due diligence on Beyond and C9, um, yeah. but um, I'm kind of also leaning on you guys here for this. What we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to kind of just talk about the teams first and foremost in their relative mm. power that we believe to DFM. Mm. And then we'll give our personal ratings, kind of where we expect each of the teams to place. Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, LGL podcast. Copium's gonna be going strong here for DFM. So if yeah. you're if you're gonna just outright disagree with it, well, you signed yourself up for this one. So don't worry, don't blame us for this. But do at us on Twitter. It's great yeah. for impressions. Oh, yeah. Um, and then after that, we'll probably talk some other stuff. Gentlemen, yeah. let's just get into this. Really. Yeah. Um, you what's the first? With... No, I think we we should start with alphabetical order. Okay. And it's Beyond Gaming. Yep. Beyond Gaming, the second seed from the PC. S, who wants to... Okay, go initialize. They're really good. Mm -hmm. Underline no it. Just, just... Underline it. People are sleeping on this team because they don't watch PCS. Mm, that's, that's a fair point. It's... That is a mistake in some ways because for the longest time, the LMS was something of Flash Wolves and whoever was kind of around sometimes AHQ. But the point is, mm. BYG are effectively taking on the role of AHQ. In fact, they bought their damn spot. Um, and Doggo is the remaining member. He's brought the flag from AHQ over. Um, and he is point. absolutely goddamn smurfing. He's in the running to be MVP of the PCS in the summer split. And he's really, 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 really good. They took PSG to 5-5 five and five across two series. Uh, they won the first series. They lost the second. It was bloody close. And if you think uh, uh, the Paris Saint-Germain PSG talent team are good, you should think Beyond Gaming are good. Be a little afraid. I'm gonna I'm gonna be real here, just because mm. I didn't know that they had taken AHQ. Do you think everyone would sleep on them far less if they were called AHQ? Yes. Do you actually think everyone would be yeah, like, yeah, they're, they're just wicked good? Uh, maybe wicked high. was maybe on there, maybe like there's an element of oh, like player. Like, like, there's, no, a bit, there's a little bit of no. there's a little bit of player brand in there. You know what I mean? Of yeah. course. No, of in course. terms of like, I, 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 probably a bad name, but you get the point. I know um, completely. Yeah. No, it's just an interesting one. What about you, Nymera? Yeah. yeah, I think on the whole, um, line up with what Sam's saying, like, um, yeah. BYG are a heavily underrated team. I was literally just speaking on Twitch to some people very early. It's like, oh yeah, I think that, you know, DFM will get top two. They have some battle between DFM and UOL for the, for the second spot. I'm like, you cannot sleep on beyond. And oh. the thing is that this, 
And that's not nope. necessarily a dig at them. Like, I know I'm kind of caricaturing that. That's not necessarily a dig at people who are trying to rate, rate these teams and players. But, like, generally, trying you only have so many hours in a day. I God knows I do. And I have to spend them wisely. I do try and, like, reach out to various experts to... Because, uh, again, people reach out to us. I, I try and do the same to other regions to try and get a good, better read on, on these yep. teams so I actually have, like, a more informed mm -hmm. opinion. And the average viewer is not going to have an, an actually informed opinion on players. They're, they're just not. And but, again, that kind of goes back into the whole why the hell are there no pickums for, for for players? That's one of the main region. Re we got this thing. Hello, I'm camera, back. Please, please. Whatever, it's fine. No cool. It's but, back. Um, BYG are one of those teams where actually, I think the comparison I draw between BYG is they actually have a similar philosophy to somewhat what the LPL teams are bringing actually, because a lot of the time. When you have tournament favorites and really strong teams coming into a tournament, they will actually have quite diverse play styles. If you look at something like SKT Season 5 6, they could play in different ways. If you look at IG, particularly in Season 8, they could do whatever the hell they wanted to, honestly. They could play around any lane. And we've seen Trident teams be built up a lot more in the last couple of seasons than they were in early League of Legend Legends. It was forever like this curse. But the LPL teams this year are actually quite stylized. You know RNG plays Very towards much. top side. You know that FPX loves to play around, you know, Doyen B roaming mids, playing very, very well around around the mid jungle 2v2. EDG play around Viper, because Viper is fucking incredible. Um it's it feels much like more beyond, stable too, actually. And yeah. it feels like what has happened is that the, the meta is so diverse that sometimes you do have to zero in just so you can get deeper into the experience and the expertise yeah. of a certain playstyle. Beyond have done that through hyper carry bots. And that's the read I've got on them. They are a very yeah. proficient team at just playing through bot, letting Doggo do his thing. I think they're very good at playing that style. I think they're a stable team. They don't tend to play through top that often. Doggo, however, make sure there's not really that much of an issue in their region. Um, and that's kind of the read I've got on them. I think they feel a little bit more like philosophically what the LPL teams have been bringing to this tournament as well. Yeah. So for I me, um, okay, I'm very excited to see them, hmm. but I also have a sneaking suspicion this could be the team that starts really bad and then just hits it like a rocket fish to the moon and could and this and the reason i think this mona their mid laner and mm. their jungler and uh hasha as well as kino uh their support player this is their first time in an international stage nah, yeah um cool. i yeah. am i think they're going to be great mona especially has only been playing for a year professionally mm, like it's actually power, insane yeah. how cracked this mid laner is they are he's so good. good and they have such a trajectory we've been watching the issue in Solo as well good. yeah oh he's so yeah. good the problem i can easily see happening is msi aria that first game i can mm. so see beyond having that kind of tripping over themselves in that first game That's especially against cloud nine i think that first game is mm. we'll come into predictions on that exact matchup mm -hmm. a little bit later ladies and gentlemen but i think beyond have the trajectory to be the second best team in all of play-ins and they could be the second best team in all of mm -hmm. play-ins they could yeah. also be the third which is perfect for us because honestly i have them pegged a bit i have another team pegged a bit higher than them but that's that's, that's hopium happening. showing that but yeah, I, I do think there's yeah. a huge amount of talent. They are so practiced. Um, yeah. It's to follow something we've been saying countless times about them. Um, I think they're just Axis if they were a bit more polished. Yeah. Okay. I Axis mean, like, with a more uh, stable rest of the map. Yeah. Yes. I mean, like I, I love this one for Mawan as well. Like the guy's really good, but like mm. in spring particularly, he was basically control mages ad infinitum. Oh, interesting. He, okay. He broadened it up a little bit in summer where he was starting to play things like the set and the galley on the karma. Had a couple of Lucian games that were pretty good as well. So he managed mm. to get a couple extra bits in there. But, you know, he's still very much that kind of control mage style stable factor where you'd leave him alone for 20 minutes because you're playing through bot and then mm. he turns up on a three item Azir and you go, oh, shit. Um, and there's a little bit of that kind of element to him. Which is fine. I mean, like, look at his solo queue right now. Lots of AP Cogmore. Lots of AP Cogmore. He's, from what I've been he, hearing. He, yes, it, it was really it's like some people are like, why the hell does he keep playing Cogmore? In fact, um, because you know, you know, we, we tend to know a couple of people around the UK scene and like into mm. the master, into grand master yeah. kind of level and stuff like that. Had a couple of friends run into him. And was like, why? Why is this guy only playing Cogmore? This is really concerning. <laughs> it's just yep. like so, so that's. 
So like he has a particular love and like that kind of AP Cogmore yeah. kind of works out. He's the kind of scaling artillery mage kind I, of vibe with but, the control but my, mage thing. My, my but worry that's is a bit of a worry at international. Yeah. Against people like Perks and Arya and even honestly Balulu from GS. We'll get on like, them soon. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we can, we can yeah, structure like, this. There could be a little ways. bit of a, like, a shock wake up call there. So like, I think we've had We've had a couple of takes on 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 be on on uh, yeah on beyond now. Like, do we want to just go through the teams and then talk about a couple of matchups? Do we want to talk about each team? I, in a I would thing, like or? to talk about each team personally, okay. and then let's we'll rate that. them. And let's yeah. actually just go on because I think as I think Nightmare is right, bang on the money. We've talked about beyond as much as we need to right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go on to the next team in alphabetical order. Oh, it's C Cloud Nine. Gentlemen, who would like? Okay, I'll take it first. Go if you first. insist. If oh yeah, because you've you've done research on Cloud Nine, you can go first. You, I'm not the NA Hopium boy in the corner for once. Nomero, take this away. Go for it. Okay, Cloud Nine obviously had a rough playoffs uh, regionally. It mm. looked like they were going to turn it around. They had some very strong moments, and it all kind of fell apart against TL. And the lower bracket started off pretty well. BTSM, good stuff. And they got crushed yeah. in their last series. They just they just fell apart. Horrible. And I think DFM, uh, not DFM, obviously faced them at MSI, and we had some con concerns about C9's topside uh, mm -hmm. in terms of Blabber, wonderful yeah, player. Individually, cool. I think all of C9's players are top tier, especially for their region. They are sending an incredible batch of yeah, players. Really talented, yeah. Sometimes the connections between them, the communication, the synergy it starts to fray a little bit. You can see that in setups to plays. Obviously, the scuttle crab is the thing which everyone's going to remember, but this happens with a lot of dives. It happens with some rotations when they're looking for plays and people are just randomly caught, or they're going for plays which are not massively thought out and they get, and they get things turned around on them. That has been exacerbated a bit more regionally, actually. Mm. Uh, so while C9 are coming in as NA third seed, and typically NA third seed has done very well in plans. They've always managed to get out. They've mm. managed to do... In fact, actually, C9 has played against DFM before, back in 2018 yeah. that was the last time that they played against them i think that c9 coming into this tournament are not as strong as they were at msi i think they are looking somewhat exploitable and now there has to have been some marked improvement in the month or two it's been since they played on stage yeah. for them to have sorted out their mid jungle duo in particular i think that's where they're starting to be found out a little bit but particularly just not even just mid jungle i think just their whole top side synergy is a little bit out of whack and that needs to come in very, very strong for them to be, well, the, the seed which they would really like to be for their fans, you know, because NA third has typically done very well. I think this is one of those rare times, actually, where they should feel really quite scared. Yeah. Um, like, again, I think a lot of people potentially over-focus on Blabber as kind of the C9 lose Oh, condition. it's not an individual and, problem. And, and exactly, and I don't think that's entirely fair. What I will say, though, is a bit like someone like I'll say like tussle for LJ LVs, and I know that's not fair in terms. I'm not saying that at mm. all in terms of play style or ability or anything like that. But I'm going to use this in terms of like the litmus test, where you can kind of see how a C9 game's going by the score that Blabber has. Like if it's five and one, it's going. It, you know, like I love it, that it, it's, tussle it's comparison game. now even more. If it's the, if it's, or if it's the one and five, you know, it's kind of got the Black plays have got a bit off. It was a better better example of that. Actually. Yeah, not a bad oh, shout either. Yeah, 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 that's a fairly decent shout. No. Um, it was just the one that immediately came to sure. mind, but I, I see what you mean. And, and and it's sometimes just the way it is. He's because, a tussle apologist. Um, I, 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 he is. Not so much anymore. There okay. is a, there is a lot of there's some nostalgia for the the, yeah. the heydays of Ramane and yeah. Tussle back when they were really good in Rampage. <laughs> his vision game in the jungle died a long time. It, a lot. His, 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 it, there was a lot of anger about that. But anyway, <laughs> we'll move on. It's not time. I'm like, I'm, I'm leaving that in the past. We're talking about worlds right now. Not yeah. like. I... Anyway. Um. <laughs> so <laughs> what what i would say though is like there is an element though of like and part of this is plays out by the, the the way that you know c9 like lives and dies by um early snowballing to an extent like they're not bad at fighting their way back in because they've got good talented players but they look their best when they get early snowballs going and things start going well off the play and early lane priority because mm -hmm. people like fudge and blabber and perks to an extent um can be very disrespectful of enemy priority and they just die for it. And Blabber's notorious for this because he just likes fighting. But he's doing on things like Diana early on and Diana needs like an item in level six or two items in level 11 preferably. And Blabber would rather be like level five Olaf 
and like fighting you over, you know, like your red buff or something. And that hasn't actually, outside of things like Jin Zhao, really actually ironically mm. been entirely the jungle meta. You had to be a little bit more wary of some of the fights you picked. And that's hurt them a bit. Particularly since like Fudge has also been a big Jace player too. Mm -hmm, Jace mm -hmm, is like mm -hmm. the pick where if you fuck up early, your game is over. Like mm -hmm. Jace, if you don't get the early lane prior, it's like, okay, it's not as bad as it was. It's not like, oh, it's Jace into a Scion where you die early yeah. and suddenly you just don't get to damage in the game. There is still a two item spike and stuff like that. But still, compared mm -hmm. to a Camille or anything else, which is slightly more kind of split pushery, but like team fight oriented, if you start falling behind on top side, they have struggled and they did that yeah, regionally. Wait. Now they have to do that internationally. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's plans. It's still going to be something which teams of research and I think is going to be an issue. I think C9 are going to crash and burn because it's a best it. of one. Clip it. Pure. I will. Oh, that's a great clip. I will add a little bit of hopium because I'm an old school C9 fan from back in the OG days from 2014 and the likes. One of the teams I got into watching League 3. And I'll say this. You saw that the ha they never really managed to escape the hangover from MSI and they were permanently playing catch up to kind of work out what they were doing. They've got to world. It was a bit of a rickety thing where the wheels are falling off a bit at the end. But they almost lost to TSM. Off. How bad are your wheels looking? Uh, yes, exactly. But anyway, it's the point is right now. <laughs> right, but shh, hang on. Right, so what I'm saying is they have now, however, had some time to boot camp on new patches, new meta, and have had time to actually catch up without playing the catch again. We know there is a lot of talent on this team. And I suspect, mm. at, I'm hoping for C9's sake generally and NA's sake generally, that this is a team that um, manages to pull it together and work on some of those issues they were really struggling to find an answer to in the regular season when they were uh, kind of kind of falling apart a little bit. And I think actually some of the jungle changes where well, you can play some things a little bit more aggressively early on, like, you know, Dirk plus I and Spike Whip, and you are good to go on things like Talon and Zed, so... That might help out Blabber a little bit and a little bit of time to fix up some synergy issues and fingers crossed for them, they can come in looking a little bit more um, coherent and how they want to play those early, you know, 10, 15 minute marks, particularly in that top side of the map in terms of who, who who's going to be helping out, who's getting priority, all of those kind of slightly tricky micro questions. Um, so... Gone. Now that everyone is high on NA Copium, uh, let me bring you back right. to reality because that <laughs> balloon needs to get popped faster than Travis Gafford's Copium Addiction to NA's chances of getting out at groups. Good luck. Um, like, I, guys, let's be real. I think Fudge is by far the best player on their whole team. Um, I think yeah. Perks has been underwhelming. And last time we saw him at international play, play he was the third best mid laner in his group like comfortably mm. like showmaker and aria were above him in performance so msi doesn't look so good i'm kind of dunking on them here but the, my point is is like the sum of the parts for c9 should be objectively better across the board over dfm should should be, ladies and gentlemen, outside of maybe Ebby versus Fudge. Now, that's the fun one because we've got a rookie top laner who's really trying to prove themselves in a new major region um, versus Ebby, who is the, kind of this historic figure. And, and, and it's very competitive. Last time, it was a great matchup to watch versus M MSI. That's the only one I think is actually going to be interesting because, honestly, C9 just don't play competitively how most other main regions yeah. play it, let alone cloud like 100t and tl are just far more practice at doing these rotations playing around the map going to the objective knowing at the timer 330 was like t like 100t's like jizz moment they were like oh let's erupt lads <laughs> it was it was like they were so practiced what? continuously what, what going is that for. Image? <laughs> mate it was an explosion it was an orgasm just, oh, like, mate, 330 mate, 100t the burst out into simultaneous dude orgasm. the amount of kills papa smithy was probably jizzing at it mate like they were so clean All on right, it that's was that's 330 <laughs> bang like consider it was clockwork <laughs> they were so good at this um and that, the, my point is, is like, I actually have oh Hopium and Copium dude. for the other two NA seeds. Like, I genuinely believe there is a difference between currently 100T and TL and C9 and the rest of the rest of NA. Whether it was Cloud9 here, whether it was 100, um, uh, M uh, uh, actually, I'd rather give Evil Geniuses a better chance here right now, if we were just talking objectively, mm. um, than I would give TSM or C9. I don't expect it to go great 
for them. I think they could definitely upset when we get to the best of five time and place. Yeah. But I don't think best of one is great for C9, this roster. And, uh, yeah, I, th- that's, I think that's where the, I am. The, the one thing which I will give the caveat for, and did the, <laughs> I did this yesterday on Summoning Insight as well, because this is like the one thing I'm like, wait, historically, Sven has been a really good carry bot player with individual agency picks. That was the player I didn't mention. Did you realize that? I think that... Okay, I think there's a very interesting question which we might want to dive in later and say. I would posit this is the lowest gap in individual skill between a major region and a minor region team we've we've seen. I think think in terms of individual skill, this is is the closest it has ever been um, in terms of major region to minor region. I do think Sven... Is very, very, very good though. Yeah, I think if Sven and Vulcan Lu- get Lu- Lucian Nami, mm-hmm. I ain't, I ain't gonna say anything about C9's bot lane. All right. Yeah, I, I ain't think gonna that say if, if if C9 find themselves like a kill bot lane that you can't nullify stuff like I don't know, like Misfortune with the Mumu support, that's obviously very strong right now. If they start playing <laughs> Lucian with Enchanter supports, which are very strong yep. in lane, like the Nami, like the Lulu, that could be an issue. I like yep. Utapon and Gang. I think their laning phase is very solid. I think we've seen them do very well against hyper carry bots. We don't know what we do against the current meta champions. I don't really want to go into like a deep meta talk about everything that's going to happen because there's every chance that Plans has a load of random picks which don't last three Plans and like, like they don't last the groups. Like the Echo Jungle, jungle, jungle all over yeah, again. Yeah. All that stuff. There is a chance that we see all the Assassin Junglers. Lilia, sure, it's Lilia, Nidalee coming back. <laughs> or we have like these weird bot lane picks coming in. Luckily, solo lanes look to be okay for us. And obviously that's very important for DFM just as like they, they know mm-hmm. their comfort picks. But I think C9... If they find a way to play around bot side, I would be more terrified of them than if they were playing around top yep. side. I think if C9 choose like, to play around top side, yeah. I, I think they'll have issues. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that's... So, I, 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 I don't want to write C9 off, and I think that's not fair, because I do think there's a lot of Yeah, there, but this and, is personal but, opinions. We can say... Yeah. You, you, you're you yeah. clearly on the hopium. I'm um, on the I'm on the downward I, I, trajectory. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm doing this because I, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep my expectations in check for DFM because oh. I think it would be wise to go... It would be almost like, nah, C9 are going to suck. I mean, that's a world what they do. They stay on the same trajectory and nothing is solved and they get picked apart. There mm-hmm. is another world where, you know, actually um, th- they don't in over lane priority early on and then have like perks die multiple times to people dive in because people haven't tracked roams properly and suddenly you get perks starting the lead and perks and sven are always the the talismans for leading c9 to victory when they're looking good these guys are the ones in the end being the one being the true carries yep. even if blabber is often the litmus test for how the games are going um I, I think they're the guys to keep your eyes on and while i agree with you for just being their most consistent member i think it would be unwise to put the amount of consistent pressure top that they have been doing and i think that could be problematic for them if they're not careful let's head over to gladatisserie east galatasaray yeah galatasaray yeah that that turkish team actually not just that Turkish team, GSE Sports, as I'm going to refer to them, because that's just way easier for me and my uh, weird brain. Uh, they have a pretty interesting lineup coming mm-hmm. into Worlds. Um, I mean, we've already mentioned their mid laner of Bolulu, um, who is kind of actually sicko mode. Um, like play, like he's actually yeah. a ridiculously high player. The the, the sucky thing for this guy. He's going against a group of really good mid laners, so it's, I know. it's really not going to be free for them. Um, who would like to take this one first? I am Sorry. happy to, but Sam can for else. No, on, no, I, I started the first one. Lexi did the last yeah, one. You go sure. for this one. Okay, so Galatasaray, um, mainly prep for them in the last couple of days. Uh, I heard because I, I'm not, I didn't watch a lot of TCL. The person who I used to talk about uh, TCL with is Nightstar, who's now casting PCS, who so has less time to do that. Um, so, looking through Galatasaray semifinals and finals, my read on this ter- this team is thus. Mid and support are cracked as hell. Balulu and um, Zergsting are so good. Particularly Zergsting. Incredible. I think it's Thresh, it's Rakan, it's Alistair. It's Thresh. Is, so is slick. absolutely absurd. Yeah. I think that he is a genuine player to watch. Keep your eyes on that guy. Balulu, on the rise, on Lucian, has also been... Very, very fun to, to watch in lane amongst uh, amongst other things. Of course, Lucian kind of moving out of the mid pool and down towards bot might change the way that that team plays around that. And I think that um, uh, Mihito, the jungler, has been been pretty decent as well. Played a lot of Viego. Yeah, yeah. The Viego's done well for that team. 
My issues for this team are that as much as they have these superstar mid uh, and, and supports, I do feel like a live the AD carry could find himself a bit in deep waters here. I think there are some very good AD carries in this group. You've got Doggo, you've got Utapon, you have perks. And then you've also got, you know, I mean, like, you're well, they don't have Gadget anymore, but Argonaut's no mm. slouch either. But I, yeah, I yeah. feel like even though they have Crazy, who is a very uh, proficient top player with a lot of experience, used to be an XL LCK player, I feel like Crazy and Alive might get exposed in a group like this. It's no fault of their own necessarily. I think this team is good. I think they do have individual talent. This is not an easy group. The overall level of talent in this group is very, very high. I think that Galatasaray were scrappy in their series. They were frequently not closing out very well, even from huge leads, even though they were quite fun. Found some very fun skirmishes to get those leads. They they, they could get very good early game stats, stacking objectives on, on both sides of the map. They were winning in Herald and Dragons in some games. But I feel like if your AD carry is getting randomly caught, you don't stand a chance in this group, uh, even though mid and support for me have been shining stars. Yeah, and this is an org that have never been to Worlds before or even an international event before, so this is a big thing for the organization. Um, I mean, their head coach has been around since Kingdom Come of Irene, um, so he literally, uh, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, literally, uh, Shanghai Jokers... Uh, no, Saigon Jokers. Saigon, 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 Saigon Jokers, yeah. there we go. I'm trying to remember right. off the top Way of my head, so I'm like... Well. Uh, um, like, CLG... Like, the guy has literally been in every major region, like very talented coaching style. Um, it's great to see that they've been able to make it this far, but I very much do echo the points that I believe they have got two cracked players that are, that are as good as Gang and Aria. I think they I... have players as good, but the rest of the parts are nowhere near as good. And it's like, when you're like, oh, we're kind of like two out of five and DFM is five out of five. It's kind of like, well, I feel like you're kind of just playing a little bit more catch up. I think there's a good chance that this team could easily take a best of one. I think they're very yeah. talented and they're and by the way, their finals definitely deserves a watch. It's mm. fucking sick to watch some of these players pop off. I just Semi don't think was the better they... series. We'll say that. Yeah. Was the Sim better series. Similar to similar to ours. Very yeah. similar to ours. Yeah. It was yeah. it was uh yeah, that so exact same thing. Well, well, yeah, then that's where I kind of want to jump in because for all that I think Balulu and uh, Zerg, Zerg, Zerg bang on last net, last part of his name, where am I looking at it? Zerg 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 Zerg. Zerg. Zerg Sting. Sting. I want to go to, Ting, I want to go Zerg Ting. Stein, which is like wrong. Zerg Sting. There we go. Um, um, and the thing was like in that semi-finals particularly. I'll, I'll throw some downers in here. In that semi-finals particularly, their mid-game tier two plays were awful. Like their map rotations bad. was yeah. Uh, so it wasn't the map rotations in some ways. Like like some of their early map rotations were actually yeah. fairly like at least fairly. What they were was quick, if you know what I mean. So like mm. they would jump on something, and like even if people mm. turned up, like they were all there, all on the page. And even if it was going to be a fight, they were down for it. And there's something to that. Probably the tier twos, they'd all do it like a little bit too deep, so they couldn't actually be there as quickly. And there was like multiple tier two fights where like Aphelios sometimes somehow gets a triple kill at the end of it because they die oh, badly, yeah. and they are 10k up at the time, and they lose barons they shouldn't have, and they nearly lose fights from 10k up multiple times. And Balulu goes way too deep quite a lot on that one. He goes to the big play and, and does mm. an into it a bit. Um, and that was the one thing. Is like, actually, Balulu's things like his Azir, whew, clean stuff. His Lucian, really clean stuff. But there is this element of Guy goes really deep for big plays by himself sometimes. Um, and, like, that will hurt you really badly I, I... versus um, the teams in this group. Like, it'll hurt yeah. if he's not careful i think he's really good i still think he's a step behind aria i still think he's a step behind perks yeah. uh, and we saw him at last world where he was in fact pretty good um he was on was he on super massive i want to say i think so yeah um, that was the team that went last time yeah so it was super massive with like yeah, snow and cow wasn't it um yes and yes. yeah and, and, and yeah. you know he was able to take down mad lions and stuff like and he was definitely a part of that but like but Mad Lions also kind of took themselves down a little bit, and they and, and like and we kind of saw like like actually he could be outmatched there. I still think he's really good. I still think he's a player to watch. You shouldn't count him out. I think he in another in another world in another playing group where it wasn't as damn stacked, he would be one of the stars. I think unfortunately he is a good to great player in, in a pool full of monsters. Yeah. And um, I think. Um... <laughs> 
as it comes down to... Uh, this is actually a parallel I'll draw to C9 as well, because actually I think Galatasaray play in some ways similar to a C9, because again, mm. they are, as Sam was saying, they're quick to the play, not necessarily... Good. Good. They're, they're quick Good. to the play. It's not always the right play to make slash yeah. cutting corners to make those plays. I think individually, uh, like I said, their, their mid-jungle mid support, I, I think they're all more than ready for this kind of level. I yeah. don't think they're duo synergy in terms of top jungle yeah. jungle mid is up to the level of the teams they need to be competing with to get out in top two in this group mm. i think they're probably because of that likely going to be third through fifth in some order it's volatile enough that they could get any of those positions but yeah i don't think that necessarily the synergy is there i think they're too scrappy yeah. and they're not clinical enough yeah but will well hurt you in some of these battles. Yeah, games. potentially. I mean, put it another way, maybe they sneak a win off people because they are scrappy enough in the late game. Go watch okay. that game four of their semi-finals. Go watch the highlights of it. It's like five mm -hmm. minutes of your time. Um, I almost the, wonder... The, the like... highlights of their game four of the semi-finals. It is an utter fiesta. Not to use Riot's words against them. Um, but I'm talking like... 40 kills at 41 minutes. Elder Dragon's been training for Baron Dragon's nearly lose the Nexus, but somehow turn it around and run it down the other way and like give up. They give up 10k gold leads and somehow still manage to come back in. And, you know, and like it's like well done on winning this game. And like clearly you were looking for some good fights, but you should never, ever, ever have been in this position. Um, <laughs> so like there is like like there is this kind of side where you go, look, the finals were a bit of a stomp and you see how good they can be. Then you go back at the semifinals, you go, there is something lurking under the surface which could get really punished that, there. And the level of competition from the other teams, I'm not entirely convinced by. I don't know if we've seen them really in an under pressure scenario yet. And that's my mm. worry. I don't think we have a good benchmark for them. I I don't actually think there is one. Um, I think currently, ever since that vague exodus of a few good players from Turkey, um, the region has been apart, yeah. kind of struggling to get to the same level. And that's not to say that the TCL and that Galatasaray specifically are weak as a team. Um, but like the region, when you kind of look at it and it feels like it's almost kind of like a peace level team or peace level region uh, where there are like two good teams and then there's the rest. Similar to the LJL in a weird way as well, mm. because there are kind of like DFM is on another level from the rest of the other teams. And that's why we have the same question about DFM. The difference is the enough there's been enough backroom talk and rumors about DFM being absolute monsters doing stuff, as well as V3 mm. Academy and a few of the other teams. It's like, well, We're I feel okay like it's now. okay to say that. Whereas Gladiatory, I haven't heard so much about scrims. Maybe they're just scrim gods and like they play against a bunch of the LEC teams and they're great. I don't know. Do you guys know anything like no, that? Not myself. Um, nah, so I will t I'll t yeah. I, 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 it's an interesting thought though because of course my rating should have... be obvious if people are wondering where I think they're going to be coming uh, from. So, just that yeah. statement. So if you, th I think that Turkey is in a currently in a state which would be comparable to what would happen if DFM basically fell apart after this year. Uh, I yeah. think that TCL will hey, be in a similar hey, state hey, to DFM. Stop leaking the potential future that we don't want to talk about. But like when you have when you have a <laughs> when you have a um, uh, when you have a very stacked team, when you have nuclear yep. talented one team, and you have the super team which then falls apart, you have to rebuild again. TCL had that with mm -hmm. super massive. They're rebuilding again. It was going to happen. Uh, obviously, hopefully for their region, and their fans, they end up doing well. Not looking likely this time around though. We'll have to wait and see, gentlemen, how it will um, play out. Yes, I think it's probably the best way of phrasing that. Um, there's there's a lot of interest and hope. Like, I, I mean, I'm. We'll revert. We'll reserve full judgment till we see their first game. But that doesn't mean we are done with all of it. Last and final team for us to review in comparison to DFM and kind of give you our impressions on them are the Unicorns of Love, and wasn't their coach on the same show you appeared on, yeah, Nymera? So does that mean yeah. our opinion, your opinion <laughs> at least, not mine and Sam's maybe, but your opinion is val is as valuable as Sheepies? Uh, well, yes, I think your you're, answer is yes. Sure. I, think, I think you'll find that. The thing about the... Al so this is an interesting thing, right? Because one of the things which I've been said is like, oh, this Nymera guy, like, I like how balanced he is in his opinions. He's not like, he's not like biased or anything. It's like, we are in a unique position where there isn't really much competition to be English L LGL experts. It says like people are outwardly making content and stuff. What that means is that we don't have to sell ourselves when making outrageous comments. We can actually remain quite balanced. 
because we are like the primary font of this stuff. We don't have to push for like um, anything like that. So I'd like to think that, that we've done a pretty good job on that. But obviously, yeah, Sheep was on something inside as well. So I listened to most of that segment. Obviously, I was like going off and getting a drink and stuff like that. So I didn't hear all of it. But uh, Sheepy was quite cool on his predictions with UOL. Yeah. Um, says like, well, you know, very volatile. Any chance that any of these teams pop off, there's a reason that you can make a reasonable expectation for any of these five teams to to make it out in, in pretty much any order, right? Um, but UOL, like, he, he hopes for the best, but it's going to be a difficult group. And I, I don't know what your guys' read on them as a team is, but I think after losing Gadget, they've lost a little bit of that weird firepower. And I think that will surprise uh, they, a lot of fans internationally that expect yeah, them to be the same less team. Joker cards to pull. Yeah. yeah. I I actually think um so when I was on the Minor Region Rundown, which is another yeah. podcast um that we were on, it had Gareth, um, who is uh, an Play expert it, yeah. in uh the CSI region. Um CIS. the way that I kind of uh, the LCI CSI region, yeah, Miami, they just love their they the love C their um, C I investigation. investigation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. That's I'm is. like, that's what it is technically <laughs> called, but it's the L C L, right? Yeah. yeah. CIS, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the region as a whole has diminished over the last few years. It's something that was mm. mentioned over the last year, um, last year at Worlds, where we talked about, and it's something that I think has continued to be an issue. Uh, there is a known funding concern for a lot of the orgs over in that region, and I think that has just kind of exacerbated even worse. Outside, of, I don't really know how it's truly affecting teams i just know it's a thing and it's in talks yeah i think unicorns of love got worse and that the region as a self hasn't gotten better to kind of go ah well uol have, are now wounded dogs let us now capitalize on this opportunity and jump over them um no one actually succeeded in jumping them temporarily but never enough. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're still a very good and practiced team. The problem is their bot lane is now abusable, and uh, mm. yeah, Unipod and Gang are going to have a great time. So, like, No Man's is not going to have an easy time in this group. No Man's is a very oh, good player, yeah, but I think that No Man's needs to do well for UOL to do well, and he's against Arya, Perk, he's the and Belulu. He's the fourth best mid laner. Like, in there, too. Like, this oh is, my god, maybe he's fifth. This is like, I mean, like, I, I think that oh. maybe get, I think there is an outside chance that UOL maybe beat BYG because no man's just kind of like outskills them mid. maybe there's a chance there yeah you then have yeah. to deal with this explosible bot though versus doggo and that's really kind of swings back yeah. the other way it's a rough yeah. group for uol it's best of ones maybe they come out with some really intricate strategies and they just kind of out mind game for sure. on an individual it's what they've level done. though on an individual level you, the deck is stacked against them currently yeah uh i, I think like I, i'll shout out anana sick as well of course you know. mm. The pineapple, he's been going for a while. He's very, very good. Um, yes. And so, so there's absolutely a world, but that mid jungle 2v2 gets things going. Like, there's a few people, you know, that, that's definitely a thing. And, you know, we said, you know, at, at least coming into worlds, there was some disconnect between Blabber and his, particularly his mid laner, um, for, for whatever reason, and, and that that could be punishable. You know, if you do go against R instantly, you do get the advantage there. That's really key to how DFM play. Like, I don't expect it, but, you know, like, there are things where, like, okay. This is your strength. If you can get it rolling, then great. But I just don't expect it to happen very easily. You know, there's an outside a funny opinion. Do you know which teams could make it into Group D? In in um, it has to be LNG, right? That goes into Group yeah. D. Yeah, uh, yes. LNG. Uh, has unless to they go unless into... water, somehow they don't get it out of place. But that who's, would be like a who's travesty. LNG's mid again? It's Icon. Icon. Like, yeah. the, like the, the guy who came on to probably the best like, mid oh, in the, the in the amazing. And then he fell so, off a bit, and he came well, on to LNG. He's been really good. There is an argument. That maybe Group B of Plans might have stronger overall mids than Group D of the actual group. Oh, stage. overall, sure. Got, yeah, so, I, I can mean, I can okay, get maybe, on board okay, with the overall I'm, 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 idea. I'm, I'm, okay, I, it's probably not, but it's close because you got TL, Mad Lions, and Genji. So like, oh shit. Okay, Humanoid is very good. Jensen is Granted. is decent. Uh, like Genji, is that BDD is playing for for them in mid? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah BDD. Like, BDD good, Genji. Good, yeah. good mids, but like Aria, Perks, Balulu, Nomans are really good too. You could make an abstract argument that Group B of Planes is more stacked mid than Group C of mm, I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, Cody, that's a bold call. But yes, Co Cody okay. is on, on Infinity. Um, there is Tally as well for Peace, so that that's a pretty decent Tally's mid okay. laner. Um, I, and I don't know. I really don't a, know Red Canid's mid laner and which one they're playing. And 
if they're any good or not. So uh, I guess they're probably yeah. as good or not as good as. Yeah, no, actually, they're probably nowhere near as good as Nomads. So yeah, good oh, luck. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, no, group, 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 group A of planes is like. The group, I mean, like, I think the mid lane. Chovy, is not as, yeah, Ch and, Chovy's ridiculous. Chovy's ridiculous. Chovy and, like, and Tizan, yeah. and then and then it's like, oh, there's some really really good players, yeah. and then there's the rest of Group A. Bless so just, just 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 food for thought. Maybe actually because RNG have mm. Cryon. <laughs> I mean, Maple's not actually yeah. have the best split on PSG in terms of, like his individual forms. Group C and T, mid lane is is good, yeah. but Group B plans is really high level. Just just saying, bit of a tangent. Back on to. Yeah. This tangent, though, of the group B. Got to get, get back on the main timeline. Come on, gentlemen. I want us to currently, and this does not mean the matchups we're expecting and how we're going to happen. We're going to do that in a little bit. Mm. I just want to talk to you both and mm -hmm. kind of go, all right, we've we've thrown out some of our thoughts and perspectives currently on each of the rosters that we've had there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's time for us to discuss who and where we think these teams are going to come in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go fifth place. We're going to say the name. Yep. Fourth place, we'll say the name. Third place, say a name. Second yep. place, say a name. And first place, say a name. Obviously, there are connotations yep. on where what this means. First place will be auto getting out. We think they're going to be the best in a best of one mm. format, which is pretty relative. So whatever you think, the coin's flipping. And fifth place, obviously, auto getting out. Lexi. Hmm. Do you want what my analytical brain says or what I'd put in my pickums? Because they're very different things. Um, there are no pickums, but if there were, um, the I would ones. be the one that you would post on Twitter. Okay, in that case, we go. The there we go. There we yeah. go. Because that's the one that most people are going to see in here. Okay, so yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, gentlemen, in fifth place? I have put. Galatasaray Esports. Nymera, fifth I've place. I've also put Galatasaray Esports. Initialize. Who have you put? Three for three. Galatasaray Esports. Galatasaray is our fifth place team conjointly as well. Funny. Um, mm -hmm. Nymera, mm -hmm. fourth place, please. Unicorns of Love. Initialize. Fourth place. Uni Unicorns of Love. Three for three, we all concur on fifth. I see where and this is fourth. going. <laughs> Initialize. Third place, please. Cloud nine. I have also put Cloud Nine in third place. Nymera. Cloud nine. Oh my god, okay. Three for three. We're concurring. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. this is the more important yeah. one though. I see where this, this is, is going. Far more important. The now. great combined powers. <laughs> Second place, I have gone. Detonation, focus me. Nymera, second place, please. For sake. Uh, beyond. Initialize. You changed it. I saw you change it because I have gone for detonation, focus me. Meaning that in first place, Nymera, who have you put? It's detonation, focus me! It's detonation, focus me! It's Devon! Devon! DFM. And, 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 and initialize, who have you put? Beyond Gaming. As have I. So honestly, we're only really coin flipping Beyond and DFM and probably... Uh, well, actually, no. And something we have spoken about previously that. in our best of one that we mentioned last mm. week. I, did we do mm. it on the podcast? Wait, wait, wait. Before I say it, did we do that on the podcast or was that a pre-show thing? I I don't remember. Because I do remember talking about it, but I can't remember if it was on the podcast or pre-show. Okay. I, I think maybe the best way to do this is like with error bars instead and be like, where could they possibly end up? I think that like... No, 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 no. This is the Twitter list. This oh, is God. the one that you're okay, hard well, locking in. List, but like, there we I go. think that like Galatasaray and UOL could go anywhere between third and fifth. I, I can't see them yeah. chaining together enough to get second. I think that DFM can go first to third. Mm. Beyond, I think basically the other three can go first to third. Like that's the problem. Yeah, I think it's basically like I, I I agree. Like the two pool one teams from DFM can go first to third. It's no, it's it's really vague. It's and that's obviously yeah. awful for a, like trying to make content for viewers and be like, wow, we've seen through the lies of the Jedi. No, it's just really hard Look, to tell. My it's, my it's really my, my pickums tell. my my pickums list would be DFM Cloud Nine Beyond. 
would be with the way I would do it if I was doing a pickums list. Because mm. I expect, because my my take would be, I expect one team, and I, there is going to be one team that collapses, and I think I would just say, okay, let's go BYG because I think the, the international experience, yeah. Uh, yeah, and That's also fair. like. BYG play one style really, which is through bot mostly. I mean, I'm overselling a little bit. Like we saw them focus top occasionally a little bit. But, yeah, um, there's but a world like... where I switch around Beyond and C9, and I think that yeah. for that exact reason, right? Yeah, like 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 C9 come in, have solved their issues, and get to have like blabber run over people on assassin junglers. Like that that's great. And you're like, and I wouldn't the use the assassin jungler because he's not been doing so hot on the assassin junglers. That's been all the other today. junglers, he's, he's fucking smurfing. He's, he's the highest um, ranked. Bootcamp player right now, is he? Well, Wait, good, yeah. good job on I him. Haven't. Well done on that, Blabber. I believe he's the highest ranked bootcamp player. That's sick. Well done, well yes, done, Blabber. Uh, he was, yeah, he's he's smurfing up. Nice, but he's so, always like, been so... a mechanically sound player, which is what solo yeah. queue rewards, right? Like, was, there's never been a question ever since he was Blabber Fish in Academy. Like, there was never a question of his yeah. mechanical ability. It was uh, a his thing right now, apparently. Which is <laughs> so. What is sorry? definitely an option. <laughs> We didn't hear what, what you did said, he... Sam. Oh, he's, he's, he's Kiana's his thing right now. Oh, yeah. And he's got 90% win rate on Lilia. I thought you said his Jornatus is the thing in like the, the UK LC. Jornatus, yes. Uh, he's, 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 what? He, he, has, he has changed the RGB settings on his computer <laughs> to just see everything in yellow and he sold everything. Uh, Fair Perk's enough. got the Perk's uh, whole idea with getting blinded by light is he's a, he's helped he's helped Blabber by turning nightlight on on his you, computer. You know so what the weirdest thing was when you mentioned yellow and the first thing that popped into my head was Sin Cold City. Song? No, oh. Sin City, the, <laughs> the yellow guy, and I was just like, why is that oh. popping into my mind? Fair enough. Anyway, I where I was going. Fair enough. I think ranges are a fair way, and I think if we, I think if we were doing our normal tier listy kind of thing, we would do our yeah. ranges. Like, if of it was thing. double round robin, I'd be predicting different things. Like, yes, I think C9, agreed. C nine probably get first in a double round robin. I don't think they do it in a single. I think that's realistic. Yeah, I think they're pretty good at iterating. I think like, eight games is enough for, for them to come online and actually hit their stride. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I think that's the very fair thing. Now, gentlemen, though. Yes. We've mentioned now where we're expecting the teams to go, but we were all joined with two of the, well, three of these teams, actually. Um, so I think we should give some context. Why do we think Galatasaray, even though we just talked about them, and we're kind of like, this team could be actually cracked, um, but they have some vulnerable areas. Is that why we're all going for fifth? For me, it's their vulnerability. It's like, like, well and truly for me, I just don't think they're going to be up to the same caliber. And I think UOL could just coin flip them. There's that. But, and I think yeah. that most of the other teams in the group, um, because one of Galatasaray's like stronger points is their clutch factor, particularly from support. Like their clutch factor is sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every other team has that in more roles than they do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think DFM, D DFM has the most clutch factor of, of, of any team in this group. Every player is a yep. playmaker. I yep. don't think that. I don't think C9 is the only to... other one, right? Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. C9 is like the, the mean, other you've one. You've seen like you've seen like like four plus members of C9. You go, yeah, you could one v nine a game pretty easily. Like Perks, Sven, so... Vulcan, Blabber, all done it. Yeah. All will continue. So yeah, obviously it's like some some uh, some like things to take into account there. But I feel like Galatasaray are going to run into a wall where like every player can potentially outplay them and lose them the game. Um, and I yeah. feel like uh, uh, even though they might outclutch one or two games i don't think that's nearly enough to get them anywhere near um like top edge of the the, the group what about you sam anything else to add on top of that or, or do you want to explain why uol are probably our conjoined fourth place team i think sheepy put it pretty well on the summoning insight yesterday that um they are quite reliant on certain players to come online and if they don't it's a bit troubling no man's is number one on that list and he is very short team. list as well yeah and well i mean like i mean like there's an extent to like argonaut as well who's quite important in terms of like he's a really stable carry but he's important he gets going and anison mm. as well to an extent um and you kind of or boss if he's on something like camille right if they draft for it um, Boss is the most nap type player I've ever felt like making it internationally consistently. Like man is genuinely sometimes left to the wolves, to, but win to, yeah, I'd have to but think wins all the yeah. time. At least in in in, uh, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the um 
uh, in the like, LCL. Like, yeah, and, like he, he's insane. a pretty flexible player, and yeah, I, I kind of agree. Like he, he's pretty strong on a weak side. Oh, ironically phrased, I know, but the point stands. Um, <laughs> the problem is when you're saying like you need your star mid laner to be kind of gapping opponents <laughs> in the group you're in. You're asking quite a lot mm. there to be consistently gapping people like Perks and Aria, uh, or, or or even honestly like Marin, like like this guy, you know, he, you know, he's pretty used to just sitting there going, "Fine, you try and win against me. I'll just scale for the next twenty minutes. You won't get anything." Um, and that is a problematic win condition, and that's the reason I have you all a bit lower, purely purely on sort of things like that. Was like some of your win conditions are just so hard to activate. Yeah, I've got nothing else to add really to that. I think that sums it up perfectly yeah. for me. Anything extra for you, Alex? Or no, I think we've been we've we've covered it pretty heavily. Um, Good. And like Good. I think well, I think one one of one of the fallacies of doing stuff like this is actually overdoing it because we know yes. there is a because like I know there's like this tendency to try and get like the perfect prediction. It just doesn't happen in this format. Like it doesn't. We we will we've set out our logic. It's there. Can't really go much further than that. But, you know but let me give know. you another reason why I'm doing it this way. Cloud9, we have predicted mm. through all of us going third. I predict them to beat UOL in that best of five. You know why I'm predicting it? Because then they get faced against the second seed of Group A, which Monte Cristo himself he wants to it. see. Homeway Life facing off against Cloud9. We yep. get the matchup yep. this Fun way. Five. It works beautifully. We get to see Parks versus Chovy. I mean, it's just... Oh, that just sounds great. My, my hot take, DFM and BYG make it out of our group and Hamwell Life lose to C9 and the BO5 down at me. Whoa! Okay, clip oh, clip that. All right, 12 oh, minutes in the VOD, Jesus. mate. Jesus. Wow, we've, okay. we're doing right, clips we this episode. Okay, I didn't realize this is the clip episode. Yeah. Jeez. Nice. Right. Um, that, that, there's, there's my spicy take. That, like, that, that, I, I'm going I with could, the Mr. Crystal I Ball take. I could see Fudge there we taking go. Morgan to bits. Like, I could see that. Yeah. And that's my worry. Yeah. So um, that's my win and, condition. And, and C9 are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. I, well, there's also why I'm kind of there like, hmm, kind of also want to see DFM versus HLE. It'd be terrible for my heart, but it'd be great to see it in some ways too. But yeah, I, I think that C9 in, in third, I think... I, I think it is not good for them in a single round robin because they can't adapt to a team after seeing them play it already. I think that the fact they're playing DFM that's the I think a day... big boon that they have normally in their back yes. pocket. They are very good the second time round. Yeah, we exactly. We saw that in MSI. Like they they were very good at assessing their flaws and coming back. Like uh, actually, um, C9 in C9 in week two was it when like they? Oh no, that was the other one where it went the opposite. But like they have occasionally come back with a second round robin. And been like right. Cool, we sorted our shit out, we're good. I don't I think playing DFM on the first day as well, they get one game to look at them. A bit rough. That works against them in this case, I think. Because DFM, I think, come in yeah. at a high I, I they'll have one game to settle, like we said in the in the previous episode, one game to, to settle versus UOL and go into the um C9. So they've had a game to settle in, not too much stage time. It's like that sweet spot where hopefully that works out for DFM from our perspective. And if they're losing against DFM, I it means that they're likely not going to get first. Mm. And that's yeah that that leaves them in a difficult spot i just think that byg are going to start a little stronger than them and, i'll uh, also say yeah. i feel like if c9 if if in the first round they didn't lose to tl if in a world they made it to round two and lost to 100 thieves i actually mm. think they have a i would be Less surprised if C9 at least went to the full five games versus 100 T. Still lost that series, mm. but like pushed a lot harder and looked a lot more confident. And this is, I'm just trying to emphasize how much more I value C9 the second time they get to play a team. Um, I I think they'll be great. I, I really do think C9, given an opportunity to play a team more than once or twice to get some time to go away as well to then come back c9 are gonna get the wild card treatment where you don't get the chance oh, yeah. to come online you don't you don't and really get that you need to hit the ground running and i think in this group that's a hard ask it's yeah, why it i is. think they'll get i think they will beat galatasaray and uol but i can see a world where they just lose to dfm and beyond and kind of go wait we went Two and two with the what yeah. the f it happened, or like they have to play a tiebreaker match, or they wouldn't have that opportunity because normally head to head versus DFM would be one and one, yeah. but they're oh one, so they're like, oh, we just lose that by default. DFM takes second place, and it's just like, what has happened? This group, and everyone's like, NA hopium, <laughs> and, and it's just it's pretty awkward. Uh, gentlemen, we're split on second place. 
and first place. Now, I'm going to ask you, Nymera. Hello. Was this partly the hopium coming in? We've been peddling it pretty hard this yeah, episode. It, it is a bit, but I, th I, I think... I, 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 the, the I understand. Like, if you've got I, I a, think one that, good I reason, think, I'll, I'll buy it. Against Beyond... I, mm. So I think basically in terms of individual talent, I think DFM outclass Beyond. I think I Doggo agree. is fantastic. I think they have the AD advantage there. Doggo is really playing out of his mind. Not that Youth One is a slouch. We absolutely know that Youth One is incredibly talented. I think that Beyond are going to have a rough time through Topside against DFM. Um, and unless they have mm. a really good way to nullify topside early, I think they're going to get really bitten very hard. Because DFM, when they are ahead, they close out very, very well. Yep. If they snowball yep. early, yep. They, 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 they just slaughter games. You don't really get to yep. play back against them. And if you lose through topside early, which I expect they will, that's their way into the game. I think that is stylistically just a bad mismatch for, for, for Beyond. That's my yes. one reason for me. Like I think that DFM will take a game off of Beyond. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the C9 game does have a bit more flip flop to it. Like I said, I think the timing yeah. works out for them. But if DFM come in with like yeah, a bit less uh, of a strong top side because they haven't drafted quite as well, they haven't given themselves the opportunities, and then C9 get in like the Lucian lane, maybe that means that actually, uh, though I still think DFM would be beyond. I yeah. think that maybe they lose that game and uh, to 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 beyond, sure. and then um, and then they kind of pip them to burst. I, it is I'm a lot lost. of hopium, yeah, but like there are very reasonable examples of how dfm play against these kind of styles and how they yeah, have chosen yeah, they to play cool. very well so, i think that they have recent relevant experience that keeps that's the term i keep using which will come in very handy against both these teams i think they have stylistically good tools to beat both these teams yeah initialize you and me though buddy we we didn't quite puff enough of that hopium copium or we're just um a bit higher on beyond which is like, it for you uh, sir so Honestly, what it is, is I actually think these top three teams are quite close. Mm. For all yeah. that in some ways we've downplayed. Yeah, we've, we've said that. Played yeah, DFM, I agree. said Beyond look really scary. I actually think it would be almost naive to assume that there aren't going to be some games dropped to one of these teams between these teams because they are actually quite good and things like early snowballs at the minute, particularly from Jungle on some of the picks and allowing that then to get pressure on things like Jace lanes um, or give or getting Rise out of lane with a couple kills, all these mm. things, you can lose a game from, from you know, like from Scuttlecrab, right? From Herald plays, the we other one. This. Where it's like, where you, you just, well, exactly. C9 know that one to their detriment. Um, where, yes, these teams are potentially good enough to come back into this, but you're also going against teams who are very ruthless if they get those snowballs. Yes, C9 are a little bit, you know, messy if they don't get the snowball, but if they win that flip, holy moly, you're in danger, my friends. Mm. Perks on Silas, for uh, Fudge gets snowballing on things like the Jace. Uh, Beyond Gaming, Doggo gets rolling, got some dragon stacking. Like, things get... Bad. You, you know these teams are going to be pushing for plates and stuff very, very, very quickly. And I think it is... I think for me, I think Beyond come out on top just about because i think um at least from what i've seen they look like a good team um and i'm just i'm just keeping my expectations a little bit low because i actually want dfm to come first i really want yeah them to I, I mean, like, of course I we do to keep the expectations the a little bit lower like, you can talk about um, like perks going towards silas and stuff i think that dfm just like give them a tf sure. take the silas themselves yeah, and yeah, yeah, silences yeah. them I don't think yep. Fudge, like, if DF, if C9 don't ban Nar and Ebby gets a hold of it, it's a real problem, because I don't think yep. they have that heavy winning matchups into Ebby's Nar. Yeah, and I think for me, it's basically going down to consistency at that mm. point. And I think I'll give BYG the edge. I think DFM are more consistent and stable players, though, mostly across the board, compared to C9, who have done a lot of flipping over the last month or two. Um pretty much every role even Vulcans uh, he's kind of been getting back onto form in recent weeks over playoffs mm. and stuff but he had some rough games at some points and you know like Sven as well took a little while to get onto the meta and stuff and like you look at these guys you go well you guys are really good but you've been flipping on carrying or inting quite hard a lot of you guys and obviously like Blabber get a lot of the flack for that and there's some truth to it but that's the reason I have to drop C9 down a little bit is in a best of one still coming into things where there is some inconsistency going on and that's going to hurt really hard in BO1s yeah, it all comes down to a bit of luck of the draw, coin flip it all. And talking about luck of the draw and how best of ones go down. Gentlemen, day number one is the only day we can really give predictions right here, right now, because 
well, no one's played any games yet, so we don't have to try and be mega brain. Obviously, we mm -hmm. want DFM to go 4 and O. Oh, and this was what I was mentioning earlier. It's something that myself, well, that we've talked about on Twitter. I know you posted um, our kind of general thoughts on Twitter, Nymera, um, mm -hmm. kind of about, obviously, the group draw. Actually, yeah, we didn't do this on the podcast. It was pre-podcast mm. or post-podcast, I remember now. Um but obviously, the fact is, the FM kind of got the best draw because, as when we talked about it, their first two games are versus Unicorns of Love, which is a team they have to beat regardless. It doesn't matter. The other yep. pull two teams, we got to beat them regardless. Yeah, they, but they it, play it C9. Come into the equation. It might yes. be because of volatility, but it shouldn't come into the equation. They yep. play C9 that same day, and I remember we basically kind of came to the opinion that C9 need time to get going. This is C9's first game. They are coming in cold. DFM have already got that one game. They're coming in a bit warmer, hopefully off of a win. So feeling all good and yeah. fucking like they can win anything. Face C9, win the game. But let's go through all of the games for day number one that are for Group B. Mm. For Group B, it's only four games, ladies and gentlemen. So let's run through it. That first game, though, Unicorns of Love versus DFM. Obviously, we're predicting DFM the across the boards, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Have to. Uh, so it's, it's le we're legally obliged to. We are, and for the similar kind of legal reasons, Galatasaray versus Beyond Gaming. Who's winning that one, gentlemen? As much as I love Zerg's thing, I think they're fantastic. He ain't being Beyond through bot lane, which nope. is why you kind of need that that advantage, I think. <laughs> so that's going to be three of us going for Beyond. Now, DFM versus C9 is the one that all of uh, the fans around the world are predicting one way, and I think we're going to be a 3-0 going the other way, weirdly yeah. enough. Crazy. Yeah. And if, um, if you disagree with that reasoning, that's one thing, but like, I think we have very solid grounding for it. So, mm -hmm. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. God, imagine if DFM after day one are 2-0 and, and then don't make it out. God, oh, that would kill don't, me. Don't, don't tell me Dude. that. <laughs> Dude, dude I, I, I am the voice of reason. I'm also the devil on your shoulder, as yeah. Initialize knows all, all too well with me and Temptation. So uh, <laughs> I, I'll say at any moment, uh, don't go drinking with me is what I'm saying. Because if you say I shouldn't have another drink, I'll tell you to have another drink. Um, yeah. Final one, gentlemen, for us. It's UOL, Unicorns of Love versus Galatasaray. Yeah. And I actually think this is the most exciting yeah. matchup outside of the DFM C9 one yeah, because this really helps the gauge the direction yeah. where the group is probably going and the fifth and fourth seed, potentially. Obviously, it comes mm -hmm. down to tiebreakers and a bunch of well, other every stuff. Every win which... matters a huge amount because there's so few, few games to play. Exactly. Who are we predicting for this one? I have to imagine all three of us are going UOL because we all put UOL fourth place, but is... Yeah. Uh, maybe one of you feeling leaning a different way? I think I think it is UOL, partly because if you had... I think if Alive were, were less likely to get caught out of position and, and yeah. be like a more consistent carry, I would give it to Galatasaray. Because mm. I think that Argonaut is, is good, but not like stellar compared to like UOL's previous lineups with AD carries and stuff. That's fair. I think it goes to UOL, but it's scrappy. That is like such a scrappy game. I do think Zerk's team is going to have a huge impact on that match. Or, or at least I hope so yeah, from the guard to Saray guys, side, guys really. Incredible. Guys incredible. Anything else to add on to that initialize? I... Hmm. Okay, so this is my probably my take. I think this in the end will be the deciding match on who comes fourth and fifth. Because yeah. okay. I actually expect some of these other games to get a little bit murky in this group. And I think in the end, the whichever way this one goes, you will be at VGS... Um, probably likely determines the, the positioning there. Because I expect, actually, GS to maybe snipe a win where they shouldn't. You know, Blue Lou gets going or whatever, and UOL, similar sort of deal. Because um, I don't think they're like... While I think the teams above them are probably better than them you know, by a notable margin, like, you know, best of one round robin with so many styles coming in with, like, no... Uh, like, only scrims to kind of go off. There's always volatility. Um mm -hmm. So that's kind of my hot take, but I'll give UOL the edge, and I think they win it. Okay, okay. Well, looking at this, the only other thing I've I've come to notice is that C9 probably got the worst draw out of every play-ins team. They got, well, okay, at least in Group B. They got DFM, day one, mm. just blind coming into so DFM. Essential, yeah. That's rough. Then they get day two, second match, they get beyond. UIG, yeah, that's rough. rough as anything. Like they could, it's, it's, 
it's sad for any C9 fans, and I think by some level, all three of us are a C9 fan. Um, I like C9, yeah. I'm, I'm a big long-time per Perks fan, yeah. They could easily just go two and two, yeah. and it'd be like, they went 0-2 to start, and then they got two wins versus the teams they were yeah. expected to win, and it's like, oh... It's just really unfortunate for them, but that someone has to go there, and it's unfortunate that it's the NA third seed. But someone right. was going to have that order. Every chance that they run the gauntlet with best of fives. Every chance. Like, they're Ooh. not getting fifth. They're not getting fifth, but they could no. go through two no. best of fives. There's a chance. There's also a chance they get second, still. Yeah. Obviously, oh, yeah. Yeah, we've sure. mentioned we, they they have a range. I think I think we've, we've done that range mm. well, and I think fair. Mm. Gentlemen, we could talk meta stuff, but we've kind of chatted for uh, longer than I thought we would on all of this kind of general chit chat at the beginning yeah. for the first 15 minutes or so. And then uh, by the time that we got into anything, so uh, let's actually go over and talk about some of the podcasty questions. Now, um, the OGL expert Nymera asked us to initialize. Oh, yeah, I never heard of him. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Nobody. This guy came in. Yeah, never heard nobody. of him before. Nymera, no, no. you, might, you might need to. Uh, bit, bit, I mean, yeah, yeah that's that? just a little Sounds bit like, like still an identity issue, yeah. sir. Weird. Um, um, if every LJL team was an anime, which anime right. would they be? Well, I don't know what kind of weeb ass person asked that kind of question but i guess we have to answer it now so uh thank you ljl expert maybe a fox whoever fan. you may be um, <laughs> I don't know. So, um yeah so okay. i think the first one that we talked about when we first started thinking about this was dfm yeah. and initialize you had the idea that they were basically dragon ball z or yeah. dragon ball as a oh, series it's 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 the latest series lately. oh super so the idea no, no. is like that they've been one of the best for a long time sometimes dropped some games but they've always come back and they've been kind of the main character for for the whole kind of show but they've recently gone and in spring they were in a training camp because they'd learned the ability ultra instinct this new piece Arya's joined they've learned this new piece but it's not quite there they've still got the kazu factor still still some still some kinks to work out in the training now in summer the hyperbolic time through a little bit of a rough, rough start they they're part way through the tournament it's now they they've now kind of got through the initial stages of the tournament with ultra instinct and they're here to prove how mighty they really are uh, so it's dragon ball z plus with in terms of like goku with ultra instinct now ready post training arc part way through the tournament I'm going to throw you guys now the worst team that we had in. I'm going Boku no Pico for Burning Core. No. Um, I'll tell you my Burning Core one. Okay, go for it. No. Sword Art Online. It's terrible, don't watch it. Not getting any objections from me, mate. I watched <laughs> half of it and then uh, stopped okay, uh, because it got I, I kind of shit after the second half. I think that's personally. even better. Like, it, you start off with great expectations. It's pretty like, on the wow, surface. The it's pretty good. Episodes. And then after the first, uh, and after the first, and then it kind of gets a little bit kind of standard. So you go, okay, maybe not quite living up to hype. And then it goes into the second arc. Oh, and it's mate. a disaster. Turned off. Uh, so yeah, apparently I think season I'm there two you. and season three get good, but I mean, I I'm, I never stuck around long enough to listen or watch them. Like, if if every uh, character in your show is designed to to make your your main character look better, you've got a problem with your writing. I'm just throwing that out there. Watch Axel. Uh, I mean, that's pretty version. much every Wuxia novel, isn't it? So... Yes, I have problems with those too, Sam. Anyway, I mean, like, Hina in chat suggested Made in Abyss about, you know, reaching the bottom. No, I but the problem is Made in Abyss there. is a beautiful anime. Made in yeah, Abyss is wonderful. Yeah, you can't give them a good anime. You gotta give them a bad uh, anime. Yeah, but, like, um, Made in Abyss is incredible. Like, I have to say, the Made in Abyss movie, it's stunning. Seriously, if you haven't watched no, that, even, it. even if you're not a fan of anime, Made in Abyss is worth watching. It's not even particularly anime. It's wonderfully visually, and the, the, the premise is really, really fantastic. Mm. Very, very... Um, unique about what mm. it does. Uh, okay. What do we think of V3? Because oh, V3... That is uh, the definition of season two, the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, where it actually yeah. is really good half the time. The other half the time, you're watching the same shit over and over again. Yeah, sorted. I was struggling to come up I with I love the that. anime, but like, like Jesus choice. Christ. Yeah. it's It felt like we were on I'll repeat sometimes with them. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll I'll tell you who the hawks are. They yeah. are Naruto because it starts yep. wonderfully, so much hope, great in this season anyway. And then Plaris was shit up and, and no one really wants to watch shit with him. So. <laughs> okay, there's a so, lot of filler, a lot of filler going on there. So then, 
Axis, it could be Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, right? Because they were Alchemist in season one. They were the original version oh, of Full oh, Metal oh, yeah, Alchemist. Yeah, and then season spring, two, Brotherhood spring comes... Could be, yeah, yeah, Spring could be Full Metal Alchemist original, where it's like, it's yeah. a bit of a mess. You still kind of like them, but it's a bit of a mess. Then Brotherhood like, 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 They don't like, really wow. know the finished product. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then Brotherhood is the finished product, and they get third oh, place, I, and the I, org looks I better wonder, than ever. I wonder whether the argument would also be something like maybe like Haikyuu as well, where like it's a kind of like the story of growth as a team, and they've got this kind of this Wait. guy's kind of transferred in and honey, and he's become this superstar, you, and it's all about kind of know... learning a team and becoming way better, not quite being sure, good enough, surely but being we really have fantastic. To like the fact that it's just like honey and crew. This could be a One Punch Man angle. This could be a one punch just, man. But the one punch man it's never kind of actually a... loses. Oh yeah, because Gino Hogler is Genos. Yeah, I can actually see True. that as well. That could work. Mm. Sure, mm. but like, it, like they never, they, 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 okay, technically they never lose. That's a good point, Sam. Or, or, like, or what it yeah, is, is or what it is is Helsing, where Honey is Alucard, and then Hogler is the the girl, uh, the, uh, the the, the, um, uh, the cannon lady, boss, uh, Sarah police police girl. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, Thank oh, you for the Helsing of Rage reference. <laughs> Bitches love cannons, and we know this. Anyway, oh um, God. great reference. It's a very dated YouTube reference. Wow. Anyway, yeah. how, how it was good? an evening just like this, and I was taking a walk. For those of you who haven't very, watched, I was a very bridge. aggressive walk. Helsing I was not bridge. expecting a bridge, a bridge stuff to come like up. The entirety Look, of my and, humor for like a good three years. And, so. and the reason I'm saying is because basically, as the season goes on, it kind of starts. It's a bit of a mess, and then actually. Alucard starts unsealing himself. He's like, holy shit, that, that, that honey guy is a bit of a monster, most DPM in the game. And then kind of towards the end of the season, the whole Helsing organization kind of collapses. The building's yeah. invaded, everybody dies. And it's like, ah, honey's still standing strong, but everybody else is kind of a wasteland. It's like, ah, no, what do we do? So I'm calling out the Helsing. I, can, I could see that. Outside of that, though, it gets a bit weird rascal jester what the hell do you do about so that's that? my lie in april because it's so good and then the ending and it just hurts me it's just it just hurts me yeah it's just pure disappointment and sadness at the end it's so good and the team was so good and then i cried at the end mm. well on yeah. a similar note but how, how else could it have ended really for rascal okay. jester how else could it have ended outside of sadness on a similar note a team which kind of like starts well and goes very poorly after that. Mm. I think it has to be, it has to be Sengoku doing the promised Neverland because season one oh. was wonderful. I loved season one. Great. Big uh -huh. fan. Season two yep. should never have happened. Yep. Not in that state. It should not have been allowed to happen. Oh, Se Sengoku could also be um, the remake of Berserk. Oh gosh! It's Cl like a it's, classic. It's, it's like, what, no, 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 what it is? It's live action Death Knight. Oh my! It's, it's, it's oh, this incredible no, storyline. There's no, so no, much, there's Netflix so much oh, incredible no. material, and they make a monster. Yeah, but we have to clarify: it's the Australian Netflix version, yes, not exactly. the, not the Japanese film. No, 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 exactly. It is. The, it, it, it is. It is. They've got this incredible material, and look what they ma how look how they massacred. You know what? You boy. can take it. I, I, I think you. Yeah. So we are left with Crest not even Gaming an anime. Act. <laughs> We're left with Crest Gaming Act, um, um, which is what's something we all like but don't hate. It's got to be a comedy. It's got to be a comedy. It's got to be a uh, comedy. Well, with Nathan going support, yeah, it has to be no, a comedy. It's just That's like it's true. just such a flip. Um, um, no, what it is? What, oh, 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 no, no, no. no oh, no, in fairness, that. it might. Oh, but things I'd love to be say something like the Gintama. Because Gintama is actually my favorite anime. What? And originally, CJ were like my initial team that I followed. It's a mess. It's a wonderful mess. But the problem is CJ are not actually that good. So I can't mm. give them that classic a title. Not like What's that. What's the Agaroso? Agretzko. Yeah, Agaretzko. Agretzko. Um, no one hates mm. it, but no one loves like is. I guess some people are really mm. fanatical about it, aren't they? I mean, so maybe not. Ooh, so. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, Lucky this Star? is a harder one. I'm trying to think of like like it needs to be a show where the main character. Oh, what no? What it is? What Go it on. is is Gurren Lagann, because the main character who is who uh, the it main is. character it is Kamina. Spoilers, guys! Turn your mute your ears if you're not seen. Kamina dies, and ever after everyone's going, "Oh, Kamina, read Arya. Why have you left us? Why don't you know Arya?" Nations in the space is like, look, 
I try my best. I'm also actually quite good. And he's carrying these dead weights of his teammates he's around, right. trying his absolute he's hardest. Right. He's I'll totally just right. To support because CJ, everyone's like, <laughs> <fish out>. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got like, and he literally and has then, like, like, halfway, uh, through, like, halfway like, through the series, just, like, they get like a pity character nation yeah, coming. And it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's like, and it's like, okay, so like, like Gango is, like, and like Gango from last year was like, um, Simone, yeah. Yoko. <laughs> Yoko is like, you know, actually, no, actually, he lays with Arya, like, actually, was never really in love with CG to begin with. And it's all a bit awkward and embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's, right. yeah, there's a pity character. Like, they literally come up with a bit with, like, a, in, oh, like, a, in, like, Cassian, who comes in to, to pair up with Nathan. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's Gurren Lagan. I think that's a great example. I can dig that logic. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was trying to come up with a bunch of other animes. I was going through my old anime list here on the side, and no, no, I can't beat that, mate. You 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 summed it up beautifully. That's, that's wonderful. That's great. So, running from the top, detonation fr from the standings of summer as well, because yeah. why not? From the standings, detonation focus me are Dragon Ball Super, because oh. Neon Genesis, Neon Genesis, Ebi and Gellion. Cruel top lane thesis. No, no, we're not doing that. No, no, no. That's a meme for another time when they beat Fudge. A certain um, scientific League of Legends team. Yeah. That does Tora Magista yeah. no Index, which was my original favorite yeah. anime. Right. They do, they do right. every genre well. Great cast of characters. Class of... There you go. Cool, that's another option. Uh, Rascal Jester, what did we say? Uh, you we were talking about the my, 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 my lay in April because it's so really beautiful in the last episode. Okay, so we we actually just concerns this point with that. Okay, cool. That works for um, me. That works for me. Axis was um, were they One Punch Man because of Genos? Being um, I made the one. argument for High Q as well with like okay. the transfer, and then there's another yeah. argument there in terms of like you, know, you got the super the superstar comes in. You got I a mean, double like, one for that one. You got two options for. Or was it Alucard as well? Was, was that the Alucard? Oh one? yeah, no, we went Helsing. Oh, Helsing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Axis is Helsing. V three is season two of my of Haruhi, the melancholy of Haruhi yeah. Suzumiya yeah. because yeah. they're on fucking repeat, and sometimes it's great. Another time, like, the first two episodes you watch, you're actually like, oh, this is this Lovely, is interesting. Wonderful. The fifth time, you're like, guys, yep. fuck's sake. Um, Fukuoka Softbank Hawks, Nightmare? Naruto, because Shippuden, Naruto, sh sh yes. Shippuden like, is playoffs where no one really wants to watch that. It's fallen off. And like now Bar Boruto's here. Oh. <laughs> Apparently it's not terrible. But, it but we'll great. wait. Like, it's a very well-loved well show. <laughs> we'll wait until um, 2022 <laughs> and we'll see if Boruto yeah. came. <laughs> um... Crest Gaming Act was Gurren Lagann because was wonderful example. yeah no yeah, that, was that was really well, well done well done yeah all right um we're not gonna big up your ebay too much mate um you know a good anime together. we know this um, Sengoku Gaming was oh Promised Neverland because the second season right. should never have happened spring was great we don't want to talk about summer that's right oh no um, wasn't it no wait 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 didn't we have something it was, it was the one where it was like it was it was a Netflix Death Note adaptation. No, I thought that was Burning Core. Oh, was that was that was that Sengoku? No, Burning Core was Sword Art Online. <laughs> for me, it was Sword Art Online. We gave multiple options for these bottom place yes. teams. Basically, think of a bad anime, and it's there, including Death Note the Australian version, which isn't even an anime. Somehow got there. Figure that on out. Figure that out. That's how bad Burning Core were. That's how bad they were. Oh, um, that was a question, believe it or not, gentlemen. Let's run through some of the other ones that we have actually been asked by some of our fans on our lovely Discord, by the way. If you want to join, join our Discord server, hit the link down below in that description box. Um, Hina asked us, what do you think about the hotel restrictions and internet problems in Iceland? Do you think um, that would change some teams, like the strict quarantine affected MAD last year a lot? Um, yeah, honestly, I, I'm going to just start with this take and go, yeah, absolutely. This is honestly the worst case scenario. I believe all three of us have competed at some level. And the fact is, when you are competing at any level, if your kind of plans and general routine and, and how you prepare for a match is being thrown off, imagine if your practice is being thrown off. Well, it's it just as bad, if not worse. Any... If you've ever needed to go to for an interview, if you've ever needed True. to, yeah. for us when it's on broadcast, like I don't know when I, when it's been before a big cast to me, or, or hell, summoning insight because like that's been <clears> like I, I I get 
I get nerves through the wazoo the first time. Like, if you watch the first episode I was on there, like, I, the first couple of minutes, ropey as fuck. Um, but, like, there is a lot to be said about routines affecting you. Sometimes when you've been to Worlds before, it helps you smooth that mm. over. I think particularly for rookies, this is going to hit them hard. So this anyone hurt. who's first yeah. time at Worlds, it's rough. I think also people who've not gone through quarantine internationally, actually, this is mm. going to hurt this year more than the usual. So I think teams that actually went to MSI or have done a bit of traveling during lockdown um, are going to be in with a bit of an advantage, potentially, if the, as long as it isn't like a PTSD response, like, oh, God, I hate it. It's going to be awful. Yeah. And, like, yeah. and, you actually, and, actually, and as a result, you don't get better. But like, actually, if you've gone through it, say, OK, I know how to handle this. This isn't going to hit as hard. That's a big deal. Whereas, you know, you've got some... 16 17 year old coming over for the first time leaving home with it all suddenly in the middle of nowhere locked down in a you know, country where you know it's dark for forever at this time of year it's freezing outside and it's not food you're used to and you're stuck in a room isolated and you've got to keep your mask on all the time in your practice room you got to, you can't even use the the toilet on the same practice room you've got to go down to your room to go use it that kind of deal like that could hurt mm. yeah if you're just not comfortable and everything i i mean obviously i think dfm are pretty well practiced in this kind of thing because of their housing situation considering that they were able yeah. to um after what well, while still in um a difficult housing spot the team still ran it back and went 6-0 oh. afterwards um i'm rather confident that i think dfm are going to be pretty good at adapting to this sort of thing just inherently they've already done one msi as well which is some what some of these in other the location, minor region helps, teams actually. don't have um, like UOL do have that, but Galatas Stray don't have that because um, they weren't at MSI. So I do think there is potentially. I, I think I think some teams could definitely be more affected than others. I don't expect it to affect DFM, but that might be sure. just the copium talking. I'm not quite sure. I think the fact, the uh, fact that like C9 DFM literally went to Iceland for for MSI is, is big. So. Yeah, C9 in that same bolt. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Um. Okay, our uh, Discord questions just started talking about anime decisions, so... Yes. Uh, they're, they're angry with us, that's fine. They can be angry. Yeah, they're, they're just agreeing Make with your us because they're wrong. Yeah. But, uh, I mean... Tweet at us with your list and we'll tell you you're wrong, but you can tweet them. We are getting some interesting uh, recommendations. Gentlemen, uh, I'm trying to think, do we actually have any more? No, it's just, this, the questions have just turned into people... I mean, giving okay, examples so like, of their favorite I, animes I, I here. Haven't, I haven't watched it's a lot a of anime for a while, but like, I... Jesus, no, me like neither. Tw- in the summer of 2013, I watched like 60 anime in about two or three months, and I became very weeby. That was a time. But like, I mean, I'm I, looking I think, at your windowsill, mate. I think your weebiness has just translated. Completely unrelated. Move on. Next question. Um, We do not have any more questions. But um, after going through my anime list of over 160 plus anime I've watched, I've oh, come to remember that I used to watch way more anime I've than I did. Gentlemen, what's your favorite anime? I've got Just to end this out with okay, this whole thing. Right. I have, this is not a simple question. I've multiple. Okay. My favorite is technically Gintama. Because while I think that there are other Good anime, anime. Which, reach Strong higher, anime. which reach higher peaks, Gintama is the most consistent anime Anywhere ever, it does everything well. It is like, and there are other, like there are long running anime which do very well. Of course, stuff like One Piece is probably a good example for a lot of people. It's not really my kind mm. of thing, but Gintama does so many different genres very, very well, and has kept it up for like five hundred episodes. Absolutely incredible franchise, best parody anime out there, aside from maybe Higher and Yarkasan, which is also very, very funny. Other uh, other ones to throw in there though are like uh, Certain Magical Index Two Season yep. Two is just very, very good, and the Accelerator Arc of Railgun S, really, really, really good. Those yep. are my ones to throw into the hat. Uh, in, terms of a, in terms of a classic anime, Cowboy Bebop every day of the week. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, mm-hmm. Uh, it's Tuarama Jutsu no Index. Yeah, so oh, Unlimited Blade Works, Index. also a strong shout. Ooh, strong shout. Oh, actually, Karen no Kyoko. That was my favorite. Love that oh, anime. Yeah. That's another one in Fate. Uh, I've that's never another... heard of that one before. Same Weird, dude. author <laughs> as Fate, Stay Night, and Tsukihime, but that's before he got tied down ahead to having to make a coherent narrative in a video game, and thus it's weird as fuck, and therefore yes. great. Huh. It's a yandere ghost hunter who doesn't kill humans because the person they like would hate it, and therefore manages to maintain their like relative facade of normalcy mm-hmm. by murdering ghosts instead. 
but it's actually <laughs> really messed up. What about you, like, what, 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 what's on your list? You can you can give us a, a couple if we've given up. Mate, as well. motherfucking school animes are my bread and butter. That's all I watched. Uh, my favorite anime of all time is The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. <laughs> Season classic. two is not, but uh, it's my favorite one. I wa I've, wa I've genuinely watched the anime over like 30 times, like the first season. Have you seen Haruhi? Genuinely. Haruhi? Horomir is one of my... I followed the manga of Horomir for a great many years, and when that came out earlier this year, it was very special to me. That was I've a very, very, that was a very, very cute kind of uh, high schooly kind of uh, show. Mm. I'd love to check. I will definitely yeah. have to get the full. Have you spell it to me? Because me typing in um, gotcha. any form of hiragana uh, can be rather questionable. Uh, the other two I will always throw in is Kaicho, uh, Kaicho wa Made Summer. Um, I love... I watched uh, a little yeah. bit of that and I never really finished it. I love it. It's it's literally my bread and butter, especially if there's a blonde-haired male protagonist. <laughs> I simp for Yuzi. I simp for that man. Um, and I'm going to throw a manga as mm. the other recommendation. Claymore's manga. I will yeah. always sing it. If you want berserk, but women, um, but not like women where it's like, ooh, show tits. Nah, 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 nah. Th these women will genuinely just yeah, eat your Claymore's head off. Badass. And there's, n it's badass. not sexual at all. It's just pure violence and just horrors of war and everything in that world. It's fantastic. And my friend, uh, so I actually used to run a podcast way back in 2011. Mm. And me and my mate used to just talk Claymore for an hour sometimes um, about the episode, um, oh. the chapters when it was still coming out. But okay. uh, off the yeah. wall recommendation um, Bakamonogatari is like Shaft oh, at the yeah. absolute best. Absolutely incredible. First, first like, Interesting. Bakamonogatari is great. I, I'm not a massive fan of the second season. But like, if you're a big fan of cinematography, because one of the great things about anime is that it's not constrained mm. by physical limitations of camera angles. Um, this is a great show. It shows the upper limit of that. Really, really good show. Mm. Bit weird at times. Actually, weird all the time. But very, very good. I mean, that's kind of anime, depending on how and when you yeah. find it, and and the kind of the place in your life that you could be. Ladies and gentlemen out there, if you liked this podcast, consider giving us a like, commenting your favorite anime, so we can check that yes, out in absolutely. the comment section down below. And if it's just so good, we might even give you a shout out. Just, just maybe, just because yeah, we can. Just reasoning. because we'll probably talk about it for five minutes, and then why not? Um, outside of that, initialize. Where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at initialize, but the L has been replaced with a one because someone out there has initialize with an L, and that upsets me. But alas, this is where we're at. Indeed. Uh, I think copywriting the word initialize might be a challenge considering its use in the English language. But there we go. Find me there, most likely. Otherwise, you can find me under initialize casts on Reddit, where I post every now and then. On jinx.tv, where I write about League of Legends in Genshin. And you could also follow me on something like Instagram, but that's just like personal photos mainly. Uh, where I look handsome all the time. So follow that too, maybe. There you go. You can find me at at Mars One on Instagram, at Mars One on Twitch, at Mars One on Twitter. All of them, it's M A S K E D. It's a masked follow and then him. S W A N, Swan. You can follow That's him on OnlyFans and Unmasked Swan. No, it's just Mars One on there, mate, as well. It's <laughs> it's consistent all of. <laughs> if you have it OnlyFans, it's got to be Unmasked Swan. No, just the, say. Ma the mask stays on. <laughs> the mask always stays on, mate. COVID restrictions, mate. Gotta, gotta be safe. Gotta, gotta lean into it. Um, I, I don't actually have an OnlyFans account, so that just just putting that out just there just in case. recommended made costumes. I mean, I mean, I do. I do it's if you check me on Twitter. But that's it. Um, <laughs> I've got big things coming out over the next week, so go follow me on Twitter because cool. huge announcements for myself, person, brand stuff, which we'll probably re-plug at the beginning of next podcast. But yeah. And Nymera, sir, please do your plugging. And then to end me. us out. You know who I am. See you around, folks. <laughs>